health is for everybody. God has provided health for every human being that ever was ever born on planet earth or that ever will be born on planet earth. Health is provided. It's available to us. And we've got to learn how to receive it. So we're going to just look at some scripture and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? And so turn with me to Isaiah 53 and I'm going to read it from the Young's literal translation. It's in your notes in that translation if you'd like to follow along. It's so close to the King James that you won't have any trouble finding it and following along. Surely our sicknesses he hath borne and our pains. He has carried them. And we, we have esteemed him plagued, smitten of God, and afflicted. And he is pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is on him. And by his bruise, there is healing to us. Now, Jesus, in uh, Matthew chapter 8, lets us know that he's talking about health. Of course, Young's translation brings it out a little clearer than the King James Version that it is talking about health. But Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17 says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all, all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, or Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So there it's stated in the New Testament in the Gospels. And then in Psalm 107, uh, excuse me, Psalm, I'm so used to going to Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 105 verse 37 lets us know that when Israel left Egypt. Now I, I think you know that when Israel was delivered from Egypt, there was a traumatic thing that took place just before they left. The firstborn of everything. Cattle, dogs, chickens, the firstborn of everything. That's what the scripture says. The firstborn of everything died. The firstborn of everything died. And that's when Egypt turned Israel loose. Now, if I had about two hours, we'd talk about the types and shadows. <laughs> but Jesus was the firstborn that died for your sins. He, the scripture says, he became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that explains why an Egyptian firstborn could be a type of Jesus. When he took, his, when he took your sin nature and my sin nature upon himself, that would fit. You've got to be careful how you say this. and Somebody misunderstand, but please don't misunderstand. We know that Jesus lived a holy life. He never sinned. He never committed to sin. He lived a perfect life. But he took our sin nature on himself. So before Israel left Egypt, the firstborn had died. Firstborn of everything. And that's what set them free. And when they left Egypt, and I, I love this, because you know there were people of all ages there was the young, the old, and the in-between. And most Bible scholars agree that there was over 2 million people. Over 2 million people. Some people say 3 million. I stay with conservative 2 million. That's a lot of folks. That's enough to convince me of what I'm going to say next. And the psalm here that we have in our notes, Psalm 105, verse 37, says, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. We could talk about prosperity there. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. When they left Egypt, Egypt was a type of the sin life. When they left Egypt, there was not a feeble person among two million people. If that doesn't prove that health and healing for everybody, I don't know where you'd go to find proof any, any stronger than that. Two million plus people. And they left the type of the sin life and not a feeble person among them. That tells me that in our covenant, we ought to all live in health. 
Now, there's no condemnation if we miss it. There's no condemnation. The, the thing we say that for is so that you will live in hell. Anybody here that does not, does not want to live in hell? I'm going to dismiss you and let you go. <laughs> no need of you staying. Amen. But everybody wants to live in health. If somebody didn't want to live in health, we need to pray for their head. They got problems somewhere else. Right? There's somebody here tonight that's had problems in your feet. And some of you having problems, somebody, having problems digesting your food correctly. The healing anointing that's in here is going to come on you and you're not going to have those problems anymore Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The problems with your feet is already leaving. I don't know who you are. I could probably ask and find out. It doesn't really matter. There may be 10 of you. I don't know. It may be one of you. It doesn't matter. Israel left Egypt and there was not a feeble person among them. Not a person, not one, not a child, not an old person. Turn around and lay your hands on Becca's tummy. We're going to have a baby here one of these days. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I believe that the, the anointing of the Spirit of God flows into this baby and into this mama, and it'll be an easy birth and a perfect baby. In the name of Jesus. Because we speak those words in faith and we know that that's your will and we receive it as done. And we look forward to seeing a healthy, strong, and perfect baby and an easy birth. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Now, let's look at some other scripture. Go with me to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And we'll start reading in verse 17. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. Now, if you're not careful or if you've been religiously <laughs> brainwashed, you will assume that everybody that was healed in Jesus' ministry was healed because it was Jesus and that nobody else could do that. But if you read the Bible and believe the Scripture then every, every believer should lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Because Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, the works that I do shall you do also. Then in Mark 16, he said, the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So they weren't healed just because it was Jesus. They were healed because it was the will of God. Healing is the will of God. For everybody, it is never, and I know I'm spending time here, but it is never the will of God for anybody to be sick. It is never the will of God for anybody to be sick. Now, is it a sin to be sick? Not in the sense that we think of sin. Should I be condemned if I, if I have sickness or, or some kind of physical ailment? Should I be condemned? No, just get your healing. There's nobody here at, at this church that would look down on anybody who had any problems. We're looking to lift you up, not put you down. Amen. Doesn't matter what the circumstance is. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. We're looking for a reason to help you, not to hurt you. And the reason we, we teach the Word of God so plain and make it so heavy sometimes is we want you well. We want you prosperous. We want you living according to the covenant with no condemnation. We want you to be free. And you know, if, if you're facing illness in your body and you're sick, you're not totally free. You're not, the enemy's stealing from you. Because the word of God says we're the healed. And, and I was, I think Joe and I were ministering out in Oklahoma. First time I ever heard this in my spirit. Spirit of God said, you're the healed, the body of Christ, is the healed that Satan's trying to steal their health from. 
and I started looking at that completely different. I just turned it completely around in my thinking. I, I, it doesn't matter how my body looks, feels, or acts, or anything. I'm the healed. I look at me as the healed. I see me as the healed. Anything less than that is Satan trying to steal from me. The curse trying to come on me, and I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm speaking for you too. You understand that when I speak of myself. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. I, I have that highlighted in my Bible. They came to hear and to be healed. They came for the purpose of hearing and be healed. They came to hear and be healed. What are you doing here tonight? You came to hear. Not just coming on because it's Sunday night, and I appreciate those of you who are diligent and just come because it's Sunday night, but we ought to come to every service to hear. We come to hear. When somebody else is ministering, I come to hear. Even in the Joshua project that we have, uh, Joshua, Timothy project that we have. I love Joshua too. The Timothy project. I take notes. I don't take notes just to criticize the young young in ministry. I take notes because I, I'll take it and use it. I come to hear. I know that hearing, by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, faith comes. And I need that working in my life. So they came to hear and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude, now what kind of multitude was it? Verse 17 said it was a great multitude. A multitude in the Bible, you can find it anywhere from 5,000 to 15,000. That's a lot of folks. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Healed them all. Healed everybody. We've been saying around here for 31 years now, we're believing that there's coming a time when you cannot walk in this building and leave sick. You say, but that was Jesus and virtue got it. Virtue comes out of you. Virtue comes out of me. It's not because I'm the pastor. It's because the Word's on the inside. And the anointing of the Spirit of God's on the inside of me. It's on the inside of you. And virtue will come out of you. If we'll act on it, virtue will come out of us. We've got to get bold with this. And it's real easy to get a case of the what-ifs, Bob. I've, I've had those before. I don't like them, but, but, you know, what if I say somebody's feet's getting healed and they don't? That's not my problem. God said say it, so I just say it, and the rest of it's up to them. You got to get to that point somewhere down the road. If virtue is going to flow out, if virtue is the anointing of the Spirit of God he's talking about there. So this didn't happen just because it was Jesus. We're going to find out that it happened with the apostles. And we're going to find out that it happened with the apostle Paul, which, which was not a, one of the original twelve. So virtue went out of him and healed them all. Then go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And verse 9. You there? And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. Now remember they was trying to trap him and ask him these questions and looking for something to accuse him of. And behold, there was a man which had, a, had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? So that tells you why they asked the question. They wasn't trying to find out anything. They were looking for a way to criticize him or accuse him or something. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. 
Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him, how they might destroy him. And when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes, great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. He healed them all. He healed them all. Great multitude. He healed them all. So there again we see the phrase. He healed them all. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 19. It has to be the will of God for everybody to be healed and live in health. Matthew chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Here again, there's a great multitude, and everybody in the multitude's healed. Health has to be for everybody. And, and I've told this, and I, old folks repeat themselves, so I'll repeat myself. I remember as a kid, I was raised in church. I was born again sometime when, from the time I was five or six years old, I don't know. But I've always confessed Jesus as Lord as long as I can remember. And being raised in church, I used to hear people teach or preach, whether it be Sunday school class or the, or the pastor. And I, and I used to hear them talk about the multitudes being healed, read the scripture that we've read tonight. And then I would hear somebody say, not necessarily the minister or the Sunday school, but I'd hear somebody say, well, it just may not be God's will for somebody to be healed. I've heard lots of adults say that. In my lifetime. And now as a kid. Pretty good reasoning even though as a kid. As a, as a 10 or 12 year old boy. I used to think how did Jesus get the ones there. I, I could figure out my math was pretty good you know. I could figure out that if he fed 5,000 plus women and children. Probably 15, 20,000 there. And that was a great multitude. And then if he said these other groups were great multitudes. There may have been 5,000 to 10 or 15,000 people there. And how did the apostles and Jesus just get the ones there that it was God's will to heal? Looks like somebody would have slipped in the crowd that it wasn't God's will to heal. That was my rationale as a kid. Pretty good reasoning. The answer to that is it's God's will to heal everybody. It's God's will for everybody to live in health. It is never God's will for you to be sick. It doesn't matter how old you get. The mentality of, of still, that's still in the church is that when you get old, you get crippled, and you get sick, and you have all these things go wrong. That's the mentality. You say, but the body changes. Yes, and as long as you're still in the body, you have a right to keep sickness and disease driven out of it. What about going to the doctor? If the doctor can help you, go to the doctor. I don't care if you go to the doctor. The doctor's not working against God. Amen. Now, the healing that's talked about in the Scripture is not done by doctors. It's done by the power of God. It's cheaper, less painful. <laughs> but get, you know, if, if you need a doctor, use a doctor. I don't care about that. I don't, even want to, I don't even get into that with people. Just get well any way you can. But the, the best way is to get the Word of God in you till sickness, disease rolls off of you like water off of a duck's back. <laughs> Can't attach itself to you. Sickness, disease can't attach itself to you. God's will is for everybody to live in health. Now, to prove that it's God's will for everybody to live in health on planet earth, the Lord's Prayer come to my mind. And Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And it was an Old Testament prayer, by the way. Because he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you know that tells you that the will of God 
his health on earth. Either that or their sickness in heaven. And you know, I've heard people at funerals. You know, I, I attend a funeral once in a while that I'm not doing. And praise God, I don't, I don't have to do very many. Y'all ought to say glory to God. Because y'all are the ones that I'd have to do them for. So for me to not, I, I, I don't ever want to do another funeral. Let the Lord come. Catch us out of here. Amen. But I go to a funeral once in a while, out of respect of somebody. And I hear people say, well, you know, they're healed now. No, they're not healed now. They didn't get healed. They don't hurt anymore. They're not sick anymore. But they didn't get healed. They left that thing we call a body here in the earth to rot away and decay. And they're going to get a new one someday if they're a believer. But they didn't get healed. That's not the healing that's talked about in the scripture. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just saying that's not the healing that's talked about. These folks were healed in their physical bodies and continued to live in their physical bodies. That's the kind of healing that's for us. Is we're healing while we live in this body. Health is provided for this thing. And then there's another group that says the healing that's talked about in the scripture is spiritual healing. Their spirits got healed. No, your spirit didn't get healed when you accepted Jesus as Lord. He got born again. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Paul said in the book of Corinthians, you become a new creature. The Amplified said one that never existed before. You didn't get healed. You became a new creature. Not talking about spiritual healing. It's talking about physical healing. Now, go with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Now, I have scripture, I'm going to give it to you in a minute, where I have the right to preach all night. Paul preached at midnight, and there was a young man sitting in the third floor window. He fell out, and it killed him. Paul went down and laid on top of him and said life came back into him, and he raised him up, and he preached till dawn the next morning. So I have scripture to preach all night. There's no third story window, so I'm not worried about you falling out. Nobody's in the balcony, I don't think. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, are you there? I'm not. There I am. Peter and John is about to go, are about to go into the temple. And a certain man, by the way, it tells you over in chapter 4 that this man's about 40 years old. 422 tells you that. They're about to go into the temple, and he's been laid at the gate of the temple daily for years, apparently. Peter and John have just received the infilling, the gift of, whichever way you want to say it, the Holy Spirit. They are full of the Holy Spirit. They're full of the Holy Ghost, if you prefer. And they're about to go into the temple. And this man is sitting at the temple's begging, the temple gate begging, asking alms. Verse 3, Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking alms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Now, I think there's something going on there. Uh, Peter's being led by his spirit. I believe he senses in his spirit that he can get some, something done with this man. Have you ever been up uptown or in a grocery store or Walmart or Sam's or wherever you go? And, and you see somebody that, that's crippled or you see somebody you know is hurting and, and you, you ask yourself, do I do something or not? I've done that a thousand times. And there's times that you'll be told not to. Now you can ask God why if you want to. I don't know. But there, there's just some that's receptive and some that's not receptive is the best way I know how to explain it. And that may, I'll let you do your own explanation but this man apparently was ready and I believe Peter perceived that the man was ready to receive and Peter said 
he, well, verse 4 again, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. And a lot of preachers would preach that he's broke. <laughs> they look for any excuse to preach poverty or sickness. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, if you follow this on through, you'll find out that the religious bunch wasn't too happy about that. They wasn't thrilled at all that this man received his health. But I'll let you study that when you get time. Now, go with me to Acts chapter 5, verse 14. I'm showing you that Jesus is not the only one that healed the sick. Verse 14 of chapter 5. And the believers, this is after Ananias and Sapphira fell dead because they'd lied to the Holy Ghost. And I can give you my opinion of that just real short. And it's as good as yours and yours as good as mine. I believe the church was in its infant stage and the enemy was in full force to try to stop what was happening to humanity. And when they lied to the Holy Ghost, they put their hands, they put their lives in the hands of the enemy, and Satan killed them. Now, there are those that preach that God struck them dead because they lied. If that's true, there are going to be a lot of folks struck dead that say they tithe when they don't tithe. Because <laughs> they'd involve money and they lied about their money. And I'm not believing anybody struck dead because they lie about their tithing. God is not judging today. We live in the age of grace, the church age, and the judgment day is coming somewhere down the road. And so God's not striking anybody dead. Enough said? Okay. You didn't misunderstand that, did you? Okay. The believers were added, more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. So here we have multitudes again. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude, here it is again, multitude, out of the cities round about Jerusalem, unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Multitudes came, and they were healed, every one, and Jesus wasn't there in person. But Peter was there. I, I've said this before. I'm really surprised somebody hadn't started a, a, a shadow ministry. We've had every other goofy thing show up. They brought them into the streets just believing if the shadow, and if the people believed that the shadow of Peter would heal them, it would. It would. But the thing I want you to see here is they were healed, every one. Everyone that was brought there was healed. Doesn't that prove that health is for everybody? Whether it's Jesus or whether it's the body of Christ ministering, it's God's will that everybody be healed and live in health. Everybody. But let me say this to you. Fight for your health. There is a faith fight. Fight for your health. Don't give in. And, and nip it in the bud. I mean, if you know that there's a problem in, in your life, start on it. Don't wait. Don't let it grow. Don't let it, you know, the longer you wait, the harder it is to defeat. You'll get an image created of being sick. You'll get an image of created in, inside you that that's not, you won't want. So nip it in the bud. Teach your kids to nip it in the bud. I mean, when, when there's anything going on, lay hands on your babies and see them healed. Acts chapter 
5 is where we were, right? Go with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Now remember, Peter was getting folks healed. Here's Philip. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many that were, uh, excuse me, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Many that were taken with palsy and lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Great joy in the city because of the miracles and the healings that took place. Now go with me to Acts chapter 9, verse 32. I love this. It just, it's just, it just comes across so simple. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints that dwelt at Lydia. And there he found certain, a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Now this man had been sick eight years. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelled at Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. You know, this man, Aeneas, just did what Peter said. And received his health. He'd been sick eight years with the palsy. Now go with me to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. This was a critical situation. He never had walked. The same man heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, Paul steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, where did he get that? He heard Paul speak. And when he heard Paul speak, faith came. And Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. And Paul said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Here we see the Apostle Paul was not one of the original twelve. The reason I say that, religious people have said, Well, healing may have been available through Jesus when he was walking the earth. Healing may have been available. The gifts of the Spirit may have been available through the apostles when they were on earth. But here's a man that was an apostle, but he wasn't one of the original twelve. In fact, he was an th original thug. He stood by and watched Stephen stoned to death and approved of it. And he was headed to, to persecute Christians and put them in prison when he got arrested by God on the road to Damascus. This guy was a former thug. And here he is getting people healed. But remember Ananias has laid his hands on him. He's, he's accepted Jesus as Lord on the road to Damascus. Je and then Ananias has laid his hands on him. And he's received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And now he's healing the sick. Virtue is coming out of him. He's operating in the power of God. Now go with me to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. I told you I had scripture. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together, where they were gathered together. And there set, a, set in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, Eutychus is that the way you pronounce it, Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. I've had a few of those folks that wasn't named Eutychus. I used to have a man that slept through every service. His wife came to me one time and said, uh, I'm sorry we've had to leave the church. He don't want to come to your church anymore. I said, take him to the church won't. He won't ever hear anything anyway. He sleeps every service, and she knew that. I said, it won't hurt him. It, whatever church you take him to, it won't matter. He don't hear anything anyway. And I hope he hears this tape and stays awake in church where he goes. He sleep. I'd have people stand. I'd see him sleeping. 
we were over in the old building, a small building, you know. I was fairly close to him. And I'd say, everybody stand up. We got a message you need to hear. We're not wasting our time. We prepared to minister to you. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. She'd push him, you know, and he'd stand up. I'd say, okay, you can be seated now. Everybody's awake. <laughs> I mean, he, he would. Now, he may have had something wrong with him. But, you know, if I had something wrong with me and I couldn't stay awake to hear the message, I'd stand in the back where I'd fall on the floor. <laughs> and to illustrate that, when I started learning the book of Revelation, I, I'd sit where I was uncomfortable. You ever have to do that? I mean, especially studying at night, I have to do that. I don't, if I get comfortable, I'm liable to fall. So I, I sit where I'm uncomfortable. I, Jerry Savelle used to sit on the edge of the bathtub <laughs> and listen to the word. That way, if he went to sleep, he fell in the tub. <laughs> Not a bad idea. But I've told people, you know, there's, there are people, we got people that work at night. Eddie told me this morning he worked all night, and he was here this morning for service. And, and, you know, if he worked all night and he dozes a little bit during the service, I'm not going to say a word, are you? Because he's diligent. And I appreciate him being diligent. And he wants to hear. That's the reason he's here. And, you know, I understand those things. But you, you, if you just sleep through every service, go stand by the wall back there. Or get somebody to sit by you that, you know, <laughs> keep you awake. This guy went to sleep, fell out of the window of the third loft third story and was taken up dead and Paul was condemned because he had preached so long oh that's not what that verse says and Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said trouble not yourselves for his life is in him and he raised him up alive and preached till dawn the next morning now I just brought that up to have fun with it as well as tell you that health is for everybody. We see healing coming through Jesus. We he see healing coming through the apostles. We see healing coming through the apostle Paul. Health is available to us. The believer shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You're a believer. Health is available to us. Health is available to all of us. Every one of us. Now, you know that I believe in talking to your body. I believe every, every Christian ought to talk to their body. And, and I'll, let me say this and I'll close. The time to receive your healing is while you're well. You say, well, I, I didn't need to hear this healing message. I don't have anything wrong with me. That's the time to hear it. Time to get healed is while you're well. Now, I believe you can get healed if you've got problems. But the time to get healed, the time to receive your healing is while you're well. That's why I'm so excited about the college career and the young people that sit here on Sunday mornings. They're over and they're having their service tonight. But that's why I'm so excited about young people hearing the message of faith. Because, you know, they think they're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And I believe with the word inside them, they are. But if, they just deter if you're just depending on youth, you've got another thought coming. So we've got to get the word in them. Time to receive your health while you're well. You ought to talk to your body while you're well. Praise God, Father God, I thank you for health. I thank you that my body's strong. And I live in health all the days of my life. I live long on the earth. I obeyed my parents most of the time. Didn't you? Most of the time. And I repented and got whipped when I didn't. <laughs> Don't tell mom what I said, Todd. But... We, we obey, and we, we're promised long life. So determined. Start saying, I'm going to live out my days on the earth. And they're not numbered, by the way. If they are, you can change the number. We don't have a set time to live. The Bible teaches that we can live till we're satisfied. And I think there will come a day that the body just gets worn, not sick, gets worn, changes, and you decide, hey, I'm ready to go be with my loved ones. Now, you can, say, you can get real religious and say, I'm going to go be with Jesus. Well, that's important too. But, you know, and we sing songs once in a while that are not totally what I believe, Wes, but they're the best we can find. 
But Jesus is not the only one I want to see. Dost thou understand? My dad's there. Your dad and mom's there, Bonnie. You got folks there. It'll be exciting to see them. And those of you who lost mates, John's there. He'll be ushering, hugging everybody. You won't have any trouble finding John. They're, they're, it's going to be an exciting time. But you live out your days on the earth first. You don't leave early. We need you here. Health is for you. Health is for me. Stand with me. Say this with me. Father God, I determine because of your word, I have the right to live in divine health. Sickness and disease, physical ailments have no place in my physical body. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law and that includes any physical ailment that the enemy could ever come up with, named or unnamed. Your word says that. So I determine that I'm the redeemed and I will not submit myself or my body to any physical ailment. It must respond to the anointing of the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of me in Jesus' name. Now, we could go on for hours with that, but that's what you ought to go around your place saying. I'm kind of a private person. I don't do that around Bonnie. I do it when I'm going to the barn. If I'm riding in the RTV going and checking my calves. I'm saying what the Word says. You don't have to impress anybody else with it. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm, I'm fixing something on the inside of me. I'm, the, I'm establishing what the Word says on the inside of me. And if you'll do that, you'll find out sickness and disease can't stay on you. Cannot stay on you. There'll be a way to get out from under it. 